Point of order. Point of order, Sir Desmond Swain. Momentarily, Mr Speaker, I felt moved to be charitable. I always thought that when I addressed you, sir, in the chair, I was addressing the House. And if I may say so, my pleasure in so doing is magnified when I address the chair when you are occupying it. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. My cup runneth over. (laughs) To be complimented by a parliamentarian of the repute of the Right Honourable Gentleman really does cause me for the rest of the day to go about my business with an additional glint in my eye and spring in my step. And two inches taller. And possibly two inches taller. (laughs) I'm a happy man indeed. I've always liked the Right Honourable Gentleman in the 20 years that I've known him and I like him even more now. If there are no further points of order... Eleanor's not going to call him. We now come... I think he'd better watch himself a little bit with the deputy speakers in the coming days. <laughs> Mr. David, order! Order! Miss Order! 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 I say to the children's minister, try to calm down and behave like an adult And if you can't, if it's beyond you, leave the chamber, get out, we'll manage without you. Mr David Ward. Thank thank you, Mr Speaker. And, uh, dear Mr Speaker, what a case of the... Ah, This is intolerable behaviour as far as the public... No, it's not funny. Only in your mind, Mr Lawton, is it funny. It's not funny at all. It's disgraceful. Mr David Ward. It's very important it's maintained. Mark Reckless. <laughs> I, am, I am grateful to the Prime Minister. I am grateful to the Prime Minister. Order. A Parliament believes, if it believes in anything, in free speech. I don't need the heckling. It's tedious. It's low grade. The honourable gentleman will be heard however long it takes. It's as simple as that. Mark Reckless. It's one of your mates. I am. I am. I am. But I would like to highlight something the Shadow Chancellor said this week. He said that he would be tough on the deficit and tough on the causes of the deficit. As he is one of the causes of the deficit. I think we've just found the first ever example of political massosadism. Order! We all know what the Prime Minister meant. Mr. Daniel Kaczynski! Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, order. I understand the House gets excited, but Mr. Order, Mr. Kaz- I think Mr. Kaczynski will scarcely be able to hear himself, let alone anybody else have the chance to hear him. Let the honourable gentleman be heard, Mr. Kaczynski. Yeah. Michael Thornton. Uh, Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> a bit surprised. Uh, some of the most heart-rending cases I see in my service. One was standing, so presumably he was standing over the call. <laughs> so surprised. Sometimes I worry I might forget where I am. Um, anyway, let me, let, me, let me give him no. I'll answer very clearly. Very clearly. Very clearly. Mr. Efford, calm yourself. I fear you're about to explode, man. Get a grip. We must hear the answer from the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister. He says it is about him and me. Order. Nobody in the House of Commons, the government chief whip shouldn't be smirking about it. It's not a laughing matter. Nobody in the House. Order. Nobody in the House of Commons should be shouted down. And I've got news for members. However long it takes, it is not going... 
It is not going to happen. Members will be heard. Ed Miliband. And it's this useless Prime Minister. Yeah. That question will be heard. The noise calculatedly being made by some members on both sides of the House is order is a disgrace to the House of Commons. The right honourable gentleman will be heard and the Prime Minister will be heard. That is the end of the matter. Ed Miliband. Speaker. To provide for our children. Mr David Lammy. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. It's both... It's all that hot curry it's getting to you. (laughs) Calm yourself, ma'am. Calm down. Bit of yoga would help. Right, Mr Lammy. Order, order, order. I'm very worried about the health of the honourable member. For Hornsey and Wood Green, she must calm herself at a very early stage in the proceedings. A period of calm must descend upon the House. The Prime Minister. Order! Mr Bryant, you are now an esteemed member of Her Majesty's Opposition... Well, whether, he, whether he's his order, whether he's esteemed or not, he's a member of the Shadow Cabinet. The Prime Minister. Well, he might be esteemed by you, Mr. Speaker, but um, some of us take a different view. Um, as a result, now, honourable members opposite. Or, order, Sh- or, order. I apologise for having to interrupt the Prime Minister, Mr. Blenkinsop. A statesman-like demeanour is what I would hope for from someone who served with distinction in the opposition whip's office. Calm yourself or take a sedative. Prime Minister. (laughs) Mr Oliver Dowden. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The triumphant Star Wars saga began life at Elstree Studios in my constituency, which continues to produce hits such as The King's Speech and Suffragette. The Honourable Gentleman is banging on very eloquently about Star Wars, and I want to hear it. As uh, we approach the festival marking marking the birth of Jesus Christ... Order. 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 There was some notably eccentric gesticulation taking place from you, Mr McNeil, but you should desist. Calm yourself, man. Go and celebrate if you wish, but we must hear the Honourable Gentleman, and he will be heard. Sir Gerald Howard. Needed £30,000 for that deposit. That's... Order! Order, I apologise for interrupting. There is now... Order, I say to the Honourable Lady, the member for Bishop Auckland, who aspires to be a stateswoman, that is not the behaviour of a would-be stateswoman. Shrill shrieking from a sedentary position. I want to hear the Prime Minister's answer. Mr Bernard Jenkin. Where is the fella? He's not here. Well, we're here from someone who is here. Mr. David Davis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> for, five, for five or six years, for. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think the house is in a state of some perturbation. <laughs> but we must, we must hear from the. Right Honourable Gentleman, when he's composed himself, we'll hear from him. Mr David Davis. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr. Order, order, order. This sort of gesticulation across the chamber, order, is way below the level and the dignity of senior members of the front bench on either side. Terribly tedious. Cut it out. Angus Robertson. Politics is about choices. The Prime Minister cut the... Order! 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 Order. Let me very gently say to the assiduous but slightly over-enthusiastic government whip, the Honourable Gentleman, the member for Hexham, that his role is to be seen and not heard. No further noise from the honourable gentleman today or his sidekick to his right. A cabal of whips will not shout people down in this chamber. Be quiet or leave. Very simple. Jeremy Corbyn. Lastly, Mr Tim Farron. Uh, the Prime Minister... Order! The rights of my... Order! 
<laughs> However irritating the honourable gentleman... <laughs> be to government backbenchers, he has a right to be heard, and he will be heard, Mr Tim Farron. I am am fantastically grateful to you, Mr Speaker. Um, (laughs) Mr Speaker. uh, Members must calm themselves and remain calm. They should take order. On both sides, they should take the lead from the right honourable and learned gentleman, the member for Rushcliffe, who as always is sitting (laughs) calm in a statesmanlike manner. That's the way to behave. Angela Eagle. uh, Mr Mr. Speaker, uh, we all have a great deal of respect for the right honourable member for Rushcliffe. Um, Careful thought about what they would like to do in power. Order, order. This question will be heard. Those prating away should cease doing so. It's stupid and counterproductive. Angela Eagle. Thank you, Mr Speaker. For as the Chancellor knows, it is trade and hard work of businessmen and women who create jobs and prosperity, not politicians and bureaucrats. It is their job to nurture growth and enterprise. Uh, I was ordered! I was looking for a question mark. <laughs> and does my right honourable friend agree with me? And make clear that he does not represent this country, and he does not represent, and he, and he does. I'll have people adding their own take on these matters. The honourable gentleman, ha- order. The honourable gentleman has the floor. Or I don't need any help from the Scottish National Party benches. I'm perfectly capable of discharging my responsibility. The Honourable Gentleman will be heard, and that's all there is to it. Mr Bernard Jenkin. Grateful, Mr Speaker. Mr. Kaczynski, your moment has arrived. Uh, we, we have empowered local doctors. Would she support the reopening of Wellingborough Prison uh, as part of this excellent programme, or would she rather just sing Happy Birthday? <laughs> Prime Minister! Well, I say to my honourable friend, I'm very happy to wish him a very happy yeah. birthday today, yeah. many happy returns. I hope that Mrs. Bone is going to treat the occasion in an appropriate manner and. Uh, uh, <laughs> Coming next! <laughs> Prime Minister! <laughs> Calm down, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> You're in a very emotional condition. I normally regard you as a cerebral denizen of the house. Try to recover your composure, man. James Dudridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the customs union as a whole. Order, order, order. Both the questions and the answers will be heard. So if the juvenile behaviour can stop, that would be really helpful to the scrutiny process. Emily Thornbury. <laughs> There's far too much noise. I must say to the Honourable Member for Dewsbury that if she were behaving in a, another public place like this, she'd probably be subject to an antisocial behaviour order. Yeah. Yeah. But the Honourable Lady who is, is shouting from the sedentary position might have recognised that he started off talking about the NHS, which is what I'm also commenting on. Order! I'm not having a, an exchange across the dispatch box or across the House at this point. Order! The Prime Minister was asked a question, and she... Order! I require no help from the Honourable Gentleman, which is of zilch value. 
the Prime Minister will answer, and she will be heard with courtesy, including by the Honourable Gentleman, the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister. The Prime Minister. The Prime Minister. Ah, order! Order, Mr Knight, I'm very worried about you. You recently suffered from a bad leg. With all that shouting, you'll be suffering from a bad head. Calm yourself, man. Tim Farron. I've already said that there will be a vote on the deal in this Parliament. <laughs> Calm yourself. You're, you're in a, a state of excessive excitement, Mr Shelbrook, even by your standards. <laughs> Nigel Adams. As we prepare to take... Oh, oh dear. Mr Doherty Hughes, you seem to be in a state of permanent overexcitement. Calm yourself, man. Take some sort of medicament and it will soothe you. We must hear Mrs Villiers. I have to, I have to say, the... Uh, Oh, order! I say to the Honourable Gentleman Member for Perth and North Perthshire, he order! Order! The Honourable Gentleman was shouting from beyond the bar, which is very disorderly. On top of the fact, on top of the fact that a few moments ago, order! A few moments ago, he was gesticulating in a most eccentric manner. I'm becoming concerned about the Honourable Gentleman, who must now calm himself, the Prime Minister. Order, Miss Cherry, this is very unseemly heckling. You are a distinguished QC. You wouldn't behave like that in the Scottish courts. You'd be chucked out. (laughs) Prime Minister. £35 million. Order, 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 Mr Cleverly. Order. You are usually the embodiment of calm, repose and potential statesmanship. Take some sort of tablet, man. Mrs. Fellows must be heard. Thank you again, Mr. Speaker. I'll repeat that. It's There is, Mr. Speaker. We've got plenty of time. I'm quite happy to run on for some considerable period of time. People who are making an excessive noise should try to calm themselves and perhaps just give a moment's thought to whether they would like to be viewed by their constituents shrieking their heads off. It's very down market. Jeremy Corbyn. Mr Speaker. The economy in Scotland is not doing as well, is it? Order! Order! The Honourable Gentleman Member of Inhelion and Ya shouldn't yell from a sedentary position. I have been doing my best to nurture the Honourable Gentleman's rise to statesmanship, but he thwarts me at every turn. At every turn. Calm! Repose the statesmanlike behaviour of the Father of the House would be more appropriate. The Prime Minister. The Scottish Conservative members are doing more for the interests of Scotland in this Parliament than the Scottish Nationalists have ever done. Mr Spencer, what's the matter with you, my dear fellow? You eat home-produced food, you're a very respected farmer, you're normally of a most taciturn disposition. I don't know what's come over you. Perhaps you should go and have a rest later. You, you must cheer up. Cheer up. Mr Philip Davis. Will the budget in November put the onus back? Order! Order! Mr Hoare, I expect better of you. You were much better behaved when you were at Oxford University. What's happened to you, man? Calm yourself. Jeremy Corbyn and that action is being taken according to those rules. Now it is time to hear Mr Simon Hoare. Yeah! Thank, thank, thank you, Mr Speaker. I have composed myself. <laughs> Chief Executive... Order, 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 order. Mr Morris, calm yourself. Behave with restraint. You're seated in a prominent position. Quiet. It will be good for your well-being. Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you, Mr Speaker. There's one rule for the super rich. Order, order. I apologise for interrupting the right honourable gentleman. Both sides of this house will be heard. And the idea that when somebody's asking a question, there should be a concerted attempt to shout that person down is totally undemocratic and completely unacceptable from whichever quarter it comes. And I would just ask colleagues to give some thought to how our behaviour is regarded by the people who put us here. 
Jeremy Corbyn. Mr. Speaker. There is something rotten in the state. Uh, order, order, order. This is very unseemly. No, I'm sorry, it's very unseemly. The Honourable Le- Mr. Pound, your expertise in gesticulation is well known to all members of the House, but is not required to be on display at this time. Caroline Lucas will be heard. Caroline Lucas, we're grateful. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Jeremy Corbyn. All the evidence that. Ge- order, order! Uh, there was a lot of this yesterday. Very noisy and extremely stupid barracking. It must stop now. That is the end of the matter. The public absolutely despise that type of behaviour from wherever in the House it takes place. Cut it out and grow up. Jeremy Corbyn. Which is... Order! Mr Yassin, calm yourself. You're normally a model of calm and repose. Relax, there's a long way to go. Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. But they have equality and are not put into that position. Listen to you, Liz. Not here. Tom Brake. Not here. Mr. Brake is here. And he's always here. And he stands every week. And he's going to be heard, Mr Brake. Thank you, Mr Speaker. She asks if I and members of the government will visit the Great Exhibition of the North. I think she may be surprised to find how many of us do indeed visit over the summer. I'm sure people will, and I visited the Honourable Lady's constituency in February, and I'm still fizzing with excitement about the matter (laughs) five months later. Mary Robinson. If you'll wait a moment, I'll explain what I might quite... Mr. Or- order, Mr. Hans, calm yourself, young man. You're getting a little overexcited. I know you've already asked a question. You blurted it out to the best of your ability, and we're most indebted to you. But now is the time to keep quiet. Jeremy Corbyn. She is recklessly... She is recklessly running down... The- uh, order, order, order. In this House of Commons where we're supposed to try to treat each other with respect, no one, under any circumstances, is going to be shouted down. So stop the attempted shouting down on both sides, abandon the juvenile finger-wagging which achieves precisely nothing, and let each other be heard. It's called the assertion of democratic principle. Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Will the Prime Minister now commit to this? Some junior minister presumes to try to shout down the Right Honourable Lady. Not only unethical, Mr Opperman, but always, everywhere, without exception, doomed to fail. Anna Subri. Yeah. It is a little dangerous as well, if I may say. <laughs> <laughs> but is she willing? Mr Speaker, is... Order, order, Mr Ellis. You were at one time a barrister of one rank or another in the courts. There is no way that you would have been allowed to shout from a sedentary position in that way, and the judge would have ruled you out of order. I don't know whether that's why you stopped practising law and came into Parliament. (laughs) Behave yourself, young man. You can do so much better when you try. Jeremy Corbyn. Speaker, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. Order. The right honourable gentleman has a right to be heard. The public would expect him to be heard, and he will be heard. And attempts to shout him down are not just rude, they are irresponsible, they are undemocratic, and they should certainly not have the sanction of anyone who sits on the Treasury bench. Stop it. It's low-grade, it's useless, and it won't work. Ian Blackford. The Welsh Assembly. And there's hope. Order. Order. Stop it. It's utterly irresponsible. Chanting in the background. Let the right honourable gentleman ask his question and the Prime Minister answer it. That is what the public would expect. Ian Blackford. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Uh, 
there, be quiet. The whip on duty has got no useful contribution to make other than to nod and shake his head in the appropriate places. No chuntering from a sedentary position from the honourable gentleman is required or will persist. Emily Thornberry. I'm very grateful, Mr Speaker. In our life, in our society... Uh, uh, Mr Ellis. Be quiet now and for the rest of the session. You used to practice as a barrister. You didn't make those sorts of harumphing noises in the courts, or if you did, no wonder you no longer practice there. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> Shambolic handling of Brexit. Uh, the Right Honourable Gentleman will not be shouted down. It isn't going to happen. The attempt is foolish. It demeans the House. Stop it. Grow up. Jeremy Corbyn. Speaker. Isn't it the case that the Prime Minister has no mandate from Scotland for either no deal or her deal? We we entered the European Union as the United Kingdom. We will leave the European Union as the United Kingdom. And I also say to the Honourable Lady that the SNP has no mandate from the Scottish people to continue to pursue independence. of politics, there is an elaborate combination of finger wagging and head shaking going on, which may be personally therapeutic, but is institutionally disadvantageous. In any case, we owe the Honourable Order, we owe the Honourable Member for Taunton Dean a decent hearing. Rebecca Powell! Order, order, uh, order. I understand that the Honourable Gentleman Member for Bexhill and Battle is about to name-check his mother, an admirable woman, a former teacher, and, in my view, very importantly, my constituent, Mr Hugh Merriman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I think she loves you more than me these days. <laughs> because she's also a Labour supporter. Okay, of course you are independent. <laughs> World-class public services, better... Order, Mr Russell Moyle. You are behaving in a truly delinquent fashion. Calm yourself, young man. I had to have words with you yesterday. You're a bit over-eager. It's not the sort of thing I would ever have done as a backbencher. The Prime Minister. He asked me to add my weight. I have to say to my honourable friend, his considerable weight has been behind this campaign for a long time. And... Uh... He has been promoting this. What are the Prime Minister referring to the Honourable Gentleman's qualities as a campaigner? Yeah. That's what she was saying. She wasn't looking at him when she said it. She was <laughs> saying it on the basis of her knowledge of the Honourable Gentleman. The Prime Minister. Uh, order! The Right Honourable Gentleman will not be shouted down under any circumstances whatsoever. If you're shouting, stop it. You can do better, and if you can't, it's about time you did. Jeremy Corbyn. Mr Speaker. Order, order. Mr Bowie, you are as noisy as your illustrious late namesake, David Bowie. But sadly, <laughs> nothing like as melodic, my dear chap. Jeremy Corbyn. And Mr Speaker, that is this party's commitment to the NHS. Mr. Russell Moyle, you are an incorrigible individual, yelling from a sedentary position at the top of your voice at every turn. Calm yourself, man. Take some sort of soothing medicament from which you will benefit. Mr. Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 